which fats are bad, and furthermore, is a low-fat diet good or bad? Is Dr. McDougall, author of The Start Solution, Dr. Esselstyn, director of the Cleveland Clinic's Heart Disease Reversal Program, and Cyrus Kambata, author of Mastering Diabetes, who has a PhD in nutritional biochemistry from Stanford, wrong about fats? Which fats are good and which fats should be limited or avoided is a debate even between plant-based doctors. The low-fat plant-based doctors just mentioned want all fats to be low, even nuts, seeds, olives, coconut, and avocados. They want oils, animal protein, and dairy cut out of the diet completely to prevent and reverse heart disease, diabetes, and improve overall health. Dr. Mark Hyman recommends foods high in fats, such as olive oil, MCT oil, nuts, seeds, fatty fish, and grass-fed animal meat. Dr. Furman wants vegans to consume at least a handful of nuts to prevent deficiency. Dr. Brooke Goldner, a plant-based autoimmune reversal expert, recommends lots of avocados and flax and chia seeds with raw cruciferous vegetables without nuts until a person is healed. So who's right about which fats to consume? Doctors come to different conclusions when it comes to nutrition, as do the rest of us. So I'm going to share some health stories and you can make your own decision on which fats are good and bad. Which do you want to hear first? The good news or the bad news stories? Let's start with the bad news stories so we can end on a high note with some happy outcomes. These stories are about and from people I know. I've just changed their names. Flex is a muscular, strong 29-year-old fitness trainer with a single-digit body fat percentage who cycles steroids. Most of his calories come from skinless turkey breast, dairy milk, protein powders, and rice. For cheat meals, he eats ice cream. He takes fiber supplements for chronic constipation. I told him to eat vegetables to get fiber but he said he doesn't like vegetables. Jay was a middle-aged man who ate a protein-rich diet with steaks, chicken, fish, poached eggs, lactose-free dairy milk, and orange juice. Vegetables were included with lunch and dinner. He avoided processed foods and sugar. Over the years, his balance became severely compromised, so he reluctantly stopped playing tennis and hired a personal trainer to regain strength, but he kept getting weaker. He swapped poultry and meat for tofu sandwiches on whole grain bread with tomatoes and sprouts. I told him poached eggs are gross and to stop drinking milk, but he said he needed the protein and calcium from animal sources. He became bedridden and emaciated, could no longer speak or swallow, and died from multiple sclerosis. Tiffany, a beautiful, fit triathlete in her late 30s with lots of lean muscle and low body fat, was diagnosed with breast cancer. She ate a little of everything, drank wine with dinner, and enjoyed going out often with her many friends. When I heard the devastating news of her breast cancer diagnosis, I shared medical data with her regarding the benefits of a plant-based vegan diet. She said she might try it in the future, but not now. She got a lumpectomy, but the cancer spread, so eventually, she got a full 
mastectomy. She didn't change her diet and was later diagnosed with endometriosis. Her doctor recommended a hysterectomy, which devastated her because she wanted more children. Sue was overweight, didn't exercise, and ate the standard American diet with lots of fast food and processed foods. She was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Her doctor told her to eat a low-carb, high-fat, high-protein diet. She followed her doctor's orders and had a heart attack less than a year later. Larry is lean, practices yoga, and Ayurveda. He doesn't eat meat, processed foods, or drink juice. He eats lots of beans and vegetables, but also consumes oils, eggs, animal flesh, and dairy. He recommends ghee, clarified dairy butter, because Ayurveda believes ghee to be a healing food, even though I told him that ghee contains hormones, bacteria, and is high in saturated fat, which elevates cholesterol, just like meat. Larry takes cholesterol lowering medication. We all have similar stories of people we know. Let's hear the good news stories where people got better, not worse. Raquel said as soon as she gave up dairy, her lifelong digestive issues disappeared. When Janine committed to a zero sugar, whole food, plant-based diet, she reversed Crohn's disease, stopped having bipolar episodes, and her adult acne cleared up. She had more energy, better focus, and no longer had insomnia. Before she changed her diet on occasion, she would go weeks and sometimes months without sleep, being forced into hospitalization where she was given tranquilizers so she could sleep. Lee was an overweight teenage boy with acne. His mom served him two quarts of whole milk and lots of red meat. She based her food choices on the ads she saw. Lee ate everything and anything since he heard it was okay to eat everything in moderation. One day during a round of golf, he experienced knee pain. So he went to the doctor, got tests, and was told he needed a knee operation and blood pressure and cholesterol lowering medications. He ignored his doctor's advice and instead chose to eat a low-fat, oil-free, sugar-free, unprocessed, plant-exclusive diet. His cholesterol level dropped from 200 down to 110. He lost over 40 pounds. His skin is clear. He credits physical therapy, and his anti-inflammatory diet as to why the knee pain went away. For the first time in his life, he was no longer overweight. He is now a senior citizen, still lean with no health problems, and not on any medications. Nina, that's me, was diagnosed with type 1.5 diabetes, and high cholesterol at 36 years old. I ate a dairy-free standard American diet with pork ribs, pasta, fish, rice, french fries, candy, lots of homemade meals with vegetables and ground turkey dishes, but rarely ate fast food. After my diabetes diagnosis, I stopped eating candy, bread, pasta, and red meat. I ate more fish, more nuts, and avoided fried food. I limited my carbohydrates to whole foods to 135 grams per day. I managed my blood sugar with insulin injections and frequent 
blood tests. My insulin output declined further and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I kept gaining weight, even with lots of food restriction and lots of exercise. My hair started falling out. My strong, long, beautiful nails were splitting down the middle. My insulin sensitivity was getting worse and I was diagnosed with anemia, even though I ate on average 100 grams of animal protein each day. I read the book Mastering Diabetes and employed the concepts, no oil, no animal products, no processed foods, lots of fruit, beans, grains, and vegetables, and limited nuts, avocado, olives, and seeds. My cholesterol level was optimal for the first time since it was tested, and my insulin output increased. My circulation improved, I lost weight, even with 300 grams of carbohydrates a day. My health improved, but my brittle nails and anemia continued, even with iron supplements. So my doctor told me about Dr. Brooke Goldner, who inadvertently and luckily reversed lupus on a modified weight loss program her husband designed. Dr. Brooke Goldner tweaked the program to a raw vegan protocol and became incredibly successful in reversing autoimmune conditions for others. So my doctor told me to give it a try. Dr. Goldner's raw vegan protocol is high in fat and lower in carbohydrates, unlike many other plant-based reversal programs. Even though the fats Dr. Goldner recommends in large amounts from avocados, chia, and flax seeds are good plant fats, I was terrified to try her protocol because Mastering Diabetes, Dr. McDougall, and Dr. Esselstyn claim that all fats need to be low because too much fat causes insulin resistance and increases cholesterol. Dr. Goldner said her program reduces insulin resistance and decreases cholesterol. So who's right? I decided to test the theory on myself. Before starting Dr. Goldner's high fat raw vegan diet, I had lab tested blood sugar and cholesterol levels. After five months on Dr. Goldner's high fat raw vegan diet, I had those same lab tests redone and found that my insulin resistance went way down, which is fantastic because that means less insulin injections. For those interested in how much my insulin sensitivity increased before Dr. G's protocol, after a fruit smoothie with only 45 grams of carbohydrates, about one and a half bananas, I would need one unit of insulin with strenuous weightlifting for one hour plus 20 minutes of cardio. With her protocol, my fruit smoothies contain 90 grams of carbohydrates, about three bananas, so twice as many carbs. I don't have to take any insulin if I do 45 minutes of weightlifting, half the time as before, followed by a 45 minute fast paced hilly walk. So Dr. Goldner was right. Certain fats, avocados, flax seeds, and chia seeds, even in large quantities, improve blood sugar sensitivity. The amount and type of fats I ate on average were three quarters of a cup of ground flax seeds, plus about two avocados every day on Dr. Goldner's program over a five month period. My cholesterol level didn't change, which was a relief. Adding flax seeds and avocados did not lower my cholesterol levels as Dr. Goldner said her protocol does, but it didn't raise it either. My cholesterol level tests over the years show that 
when I removed red meat and processed foods, my cholesterol level dropped a little. When I removed all animal products from my diet, my cholesterol levels dropped a lot. And when I added avocados and flax seeds, which are high in fat, my cholesterol level didn't go up and neither did my blood sugars. So what's the conclusion? Which fats are good and which ones are bad? Based on my experiences, symptoms, and blood tests, and the accounts of people I know and have spoken to, the good fats that are high in fats that aren't harmful and can be helpful include avocados, tofu, chia seeds, and flax seeds. When I ate nuts and seeds, excluding flax and chia seeds consistently this resulted in weight gain impaired circulation brain fog and increased inflammation bad fats based on my symptoms and blood tests and the symptoms and diseases of people i know are found in dairy oil fish eggs poultry and meat so those foods should be avoided when people make conclusions they often let confirmation bias make their final decision. This means people make decisions based on preference, what they want to hear, and automatically dismiss information they don't like. Before you determine whether you believe something is factual or not, make sure confirmation bias is not part of your decision making process. With that said, is your conclusion the same as mine or different? Do you have a personal story to share? If so, write in the comments below. Hope to see you soon.